Good afternoon and welcome to today's planning committee. This is not a public meeting, but a meeting the public can attend. I'm Councillor Susan Durant, Chair of the Planning Committee. Before we commence, I'd like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. We're not expecting a fire practice today, and if the alarm sounds, please leave the building by way of the fire exit through the doors at the rear of the chamber on my right. When you've left the chamber, proceed down the stairway and exit through the emergency exit on the ground floor. If there is anybody with mobility issues, please wait in the refuge area at the top of the stairs where the emergency evacuation lift is located and use the intercom situated to the left-hand side of the lift door to call for assistance. The designated assembly point is the public square in front of CAST beyond the fountain. I'd like to inform members of the public and press that today's meeting will be audio-visually recorded and that by entering the council chamber, you accept that you will be recorded and your images retained and broadcast by the council on its website and on YouTube. If anyone intends to record or film any part of today's meeting, please ensure that this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting and you only focus on recording those people participating and ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. May I remind anyone speaking in the meeting that you will need to press the large red button underneath the microphone and ensure the red light is illuminated and this will ensure that you are recorded. The meeting is proceeding today on the basis that all members of the committee have read their agenda papers thoroughly and are aware of what they will be considering today. If any member of the committee leave the chamber during consideration of an application, they should ensure that they do not take part in the vote on their return, as they will not have heard all the relevant information on that particular item. Thank you. Item one is for apologies. We've received apologies from Councillor Amy Dixon. Are there any other apologies? Councillor Charlie Hogarth, Chair. Thank you for that, for those to be noted. Item two is the uh, exclusion of the public and press there are no exempt items on today's agenda. Item three is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? Thank you. Item four is the minutes of the last planning committee meeting held on the 20th of September, 2022. Can the minutes be moved as a true and accurate record? Thank you. Is that seconded? And is that agreed? Thank you. So item five is the schedule of applications. Application number one is the planning application 21 oblique 03464 oblique FUL, erection of three detached dwellings on land to the rear of seven Milnergate Court, Conisborough. Nicola Howarth is the planning officer who will introduce this item. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, right, this is a full application for the erection of three detached dwellings and associated development at land at the rear of seven Milnergate Court, Conisborough. It's a full application. It's presented to planning committee due to public interest and also member request. There have been a number of amendments to the original scheme um, consulted upon, namely the number of dwellings has been reduced from five to three, and also an on-site waste treatment plant has been removed from the scheme. Um, it's resulted in 14 objections from nine properties. The site lies within a vegetated paddock that lies within the confines of the built-up area and it's accessed off a private road, um, which is accessed off Milner Gate, which is a residential estate road. The layout shows three detached properties with detached and integrated single-storey height garaging. The existing trees and hedges on the site are mostly going to be retained. There'll be some enhancement planting on the northern and the western boundaries. Just showing. This is the local plan policy allocation. The site lies within the settlement boundary and it's within a residential policy area. Protected open space lies to the west of the site and there's a public footpath which lies to the east which adjoins the eastern boundary. This is an aerial view of the site. The land surrounding the site mainly consists of residential properties. On the northern boundary, you've got the bungalows on Milner Gate Court, and then the southern boundary, you've got a mix of commercial and residential uses. There's two bungalows uh, on Doncaster Road, which um, abut up to the, um, the access, proposed access. 
These are just some photographs um, of the surrounding land. These are the bungalows 156158 Doncaster Road. This is just a private road off Milner Gate and you can see the rear of the bungalows. The, the two bungalows also have vehicle access off uh, the private road. This is just the existing access to the site. As you can see, it's, it's scrubland. Uh, there's also uh, there's a retaining wall down that southern boundary um, and there's trees around the edges of the site. This is taken from the northern boundary looking, looking downwards, so the land levels actually go down to Milner Gate Court from that northern boundary. And this is a view from the eastern boundary and you can see the bungalows on Milner Gate Court. That's a public footpath adjacent to three Milner Gate Court. This is the, I suppose, the entrance into Milner Gate Court where the bungalows are. That's number three. Three and five Milner Gate Court. Five and seven Milner Gate Court. Five, seven and nine Milner Gate Court. And that's seven, nine. Um, and I think actually that's number, that's number eight Milner Gate Court. It, I did correct it, but it, that's on my laptop. So this is a different version. So sorry about that. Um, these are the cross sections showing how the houses will sit on the site. Overall, there'll be a land level difference increase of about 1.7 to 2 metres. The properties will have a maximum roof height difference of about 5 metres. The maximum ground to height difference is 10 metres. The properties are not directly opposite, they're actually offset. So the, the cross sections are a bit misleading in a way in, in the fact that they do, from this, they do look directly opposite, but they are offset. But this is just to show the difference in the land levels. That's just number seven. And you can see with the rear elevation of plot two, and again, there's about a 10 meter difference. These are the side elevations facing Milner Gate Court. Um, as you can see, the view of plot three from number three Milner Gate Court will be a blank elevation. The view of plot two from five and seven Milner Gate Court will, will have non-habitable, but it'll be a bathroom, obscure glazed window at first floor level. And this is a view of plot one from Mandarin, which is eight Milner Gate Court. There will be a, a balcony, um, a third floor balcony, which is obscure glazed. And there also is a, um, a bedroom window it's a, a secondary bedroom window at first floor level, but um, it's about 30 metres away. In terms of assessment, the, the site lies within the residential policy area, therefore the principle of development is acceptable, subject to matters of detail. The scale of the area is fairly low density. Um, it's residential single and two-storey detached development with off-road car parking. The proposal respects this, although there is a three-storey element with plot one. Um, this does have the second floor balcony, which, which overlooks many more recreation ground. But as I mentioned, the, the sides are obscure glazed. The scheme offers um, a good level of amenity for occupiers. Uh, the size of the buildings are generous um, and they exceed national space standards. There's ample off-road car parking and there's a bin store provided near to the access. In terms of the effects on neighbouring residential amenity and the environment, plot layouts are generous. The three dwellings are not sited parallel um, with the bungalows, but they're offset and they're well spaced out, so there's no direct built development opposite. Separation distances are met. The main elevations are inward facing, so plot two and three face each other. Um, plot one has a large corner plot, and again, its main elevations are facing into plot two and outwards to the recreational area. There are the land level changes. However, that's mitigated through the, the elevations, the orientation, the views the, um, of the new houses that the properties on Milner Gate will see is the side elevations um, and they are offset. In respect of other matters, um, highway officers, ecology, trees and flood risk um, have confirmed no objection. and also contaminated the um, environmental health officer confirmed no objection um, 
think overall on balance, the addition of three dwellings is not demonstrably harmful to residential amenity or has any environmental impacts. So the scheme is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Thank you for that, Nicola. Okay, we've got Councillor Nigel Ball that's asked to speak regarding this application. This is your time to what five minutes and it'll start as soon as you press the large red button. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm here today representing my world colleagues um, and I want to register a strong objection to this development um, on the four points that I'm going to outline below. Um, reed bed runoff is likely to follow gravity and run down into Milner Gate, um, down into Kearsley Brook, and then lead into the Don. And this will affect effectively those houses that were flooded back in 2019 on Dufton's Close. You will get that runoff. Now, if that rebred doesn't hold, it will go on to those houses and bungalows that's already been identified there. Um, and, and clearly, nobody really wants that. It's been well identified that upkeep and maintenance for the short lifespan is seven to 10 years for these. And this been, has been identified by a number of, acad of ac ac academics. So when water companies have, have actually sanctioned a report and academics have said that it's got a short low lifespan and the fact that they can freeze in winter and cause backup, what's going to happen when they're placed in such close proximity to other de dwellings causing runoff and pest infestation? Any built development reduces soak away of rainfall by 48%. That's come from our own flooding team, whether we like it or not. Um, and this is also in respect of other developments within Doncaster. Here on this site, the topography clearly means that runoff will take place and will be an issue down into Milnergate, down into Kearsley Brook, and then into the Don, contributing to flooding at the lower end of Cunnisborough. And those houses, again, are stressed that were flooded back in 2019. The very height of these buildings on the plans are very worrying. Again, the topography of the land which members of the planning committee have visited clearly illustrates the imposing and frightening size of these, some with balconies and obviously upstairs bedrooms. Those residents that live on Milner Gate, who live just below the houses planning to, which are planning to be built, this will actually impact on their, their, their quality of life. Many of these are elderly um, and effectively, you know, it will provide an eyesore for them looking up to these houses um, constantly, certainly from the back, ga back gardens and home. This will impact on the price of the homes that these people and indeed their health and well-being. And while we're in it, you know, it's Halloween, but, but looking up at these houses, these, these large, large detached houses, it's akin to sort of like looking up at the Marston house on Salem's lot. Whether you like it or not, that's what you're going to get. You're going to be faced by that every time you go into your back garden. So they're intimidating and they're scary. <laughs> Access to the site will be an issue during construction with lorries and building taking place just yards away from potential dwellings. And it has clearly illustrated that, that with a pre-site clearance, without permission, there doesn't seem to, to have been a considerate developer that's actually taking care on this site whatsoever. Access onto this area is effectively a, a busy road as well, straight onto an A road. So any emergency vehicles that's going to be tearing off of that A road risk the chance of, of ploughing into vehicles that are coming off, off from this access point. It's worth also mentioning that, that I know that, that we've gone through the list of, well, there's been no objections, no objections. But Martin Nowacki, the natural environment team, he makes reference to the point that, you know, I mean, I've got two two reports from him, basically. One from May 2021, mm -hmm. saying that it asked him for various details. It asked him for sort of like, um, you know, something that they can put on the consultation. They've not One responded to him. They've not responded to him. And, and effectively, you know, they've not done anything whatsoever. And then what he did say, and this is just a few months ago, is unhappy about the preemptive site clearance that was carried out to allow for geophysical investigations. It appears to be a cynical move to reduce the biodiversity value of the site. So we've not got a caring developer here. We've got an ISO and we've got potential runoff into already flooded areas. And for that reason, basically, and obviously the objections, I as a ward member representing my two colleagues object to these strongly. Thank you for that, Councillor Ball. Do we have any committee members wishing to ask Councillor Ball any questions? No? Okay, thank you for that. 
Okay, now, uh, we've also got a Mr Robert Stather who has requested to speak in opposition to the application. Would you like to come down? Would you like to come down to the, to the front? <coughs> you just press that red button. Okay. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please press the large red button when you want to speak and press again to mute the microphone when you've concluded your submission and I'll let you know when you've got one minute remaining. Um, right, I've got no fancy words. So uh, I live at 156 Doncaster Road with my wife uh, who is having surgery today or she would have been here herself probably doing this speech. Um, we object to the current proposal. We have serious concerns that if the planning application is approved that we're going to have a major issue accessing our properties at 156 and 158 during the build. The only access to our homes is the shared lane. The lane is not very wide and is especially narrow along number 158 so two vehicles cannot pass and that is the only way you can drive in and out to your, to your house. The building of such a site will need plant machinery, heavy goods vehicles over a long duration which could be several years. This includes a huge amount of deliveries, all using the lane as access, which means we won't be able to access our properties as and when we need to. This includes many hospital visits for my wife. Also, the size and weight of such vehicles and machinery will cause pressure and damage to the lane and the garden boundary wall of number 158. We have a deed of easement, which means we have part responsibility for maintenance of the lane which guarantees us access at all times. Also, not forgetting to mention the dust, dirt, noise, vibrations from the build, affecting both our properties 156, 158, and all the properties on Milner Gate Court, which we'll all be forced to put up with it. Both of our houses already have dirt and noise pollution to the front due to being on Doncaster Road and that being an A road. Our back gardens will no longer be a sanctuary away from this, as the greenery and wildlife will be gone. Over the years, this has included deers, bats, snakes, squirrels. We will lose the privacy we currently have because both of our houses are elevated one story up from the ground. So there is a clear view into our homes from the lane and the building site. Both of our houses do not have high walls or gates, so they have no security. This is currently not an issue with there only being us and num number 158. Security will become an issue with the many workers and visitors that will be using the lane during the build and then afterwards when the new houses are there. There is already a blind spot as we exit the lane onto Milner Gate pavement and road and a safety issue driving onto the lane if a vehicle is exiting the lane at the same time one of us will have to reverse either back down the road or back onto an A road, which is a very busy road. Now imagine this with heavy goods vehicles, machinery, many workers all parking on Milner Gate, adding to the already unsafe entry and exit to the lane. Both 156 and 158 did not receive an original notifi notification of the planning proposal, and we only heard through village gossip, which is odd because it directly affects us both. Both of our households have spent six years living here and have spent a lot of money to renovate and upgrade the two 1950s houses. We now feel we are forced to put up with the disruption of a long build or try and sell the pro properties despite not wanting to. After speaking with the residents on Milner Gate Court, they share our, our objections to the build. This is mainly due to the disruption during the build which will cause the loss of privacy to their bungalows seen as the proposed houses are large three-storey houses and they include balconies. This will definitely impact their privacy and will restrict natural light to their bungalows. They also have major concerns about the increase in flood risk. Their properties, which is already a long-standing issue and concerns about how the sewerage will be managed. One minute remaining. As a whole, us and the Milner Gate residents feel that the proposed application will cause a lot of stress and upset with no benefit to us, especially as the proposal is not, not in keeping with the house size and cost of the area. Thank you very much. Thank you for that.
I will now ask the committee members if they wish to ask Mr. Sabat any questions in relation to a submission. Do we have any questions from the committee? No? Thank you for that. Okay, committee, I'm just going to uh, have Roy clarify some information for you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just uh, as members are about to enter into debate and start asking questions and so on, I just wanted to draw your attention to paragraph 8.30. Uh, just want to ensure that uh, you're focusing on the relevant issues. 8.30 is, is uh, summarising the flood risk team's consultation. Uh, and you've heard comment uh, about uh, the use of reed beds and the concerns about that. That was originally proposed. However, that's actually been removed from the design strategy from this scheme. Uh, and that's following consultation with the Environment Agency and Yorkshire Water. And it's now going to be a foul mains connection. Uh, I just wanted to ensure you were just aware of that. And I'm sure there's lots of other issues that you'll probably be wanting to explore. Thank you. Thank you for that, Roy. It's now time for committee members to go into debate. Uh, does any member wish to comment on the report or ask the planning officer a question? I want to start with Councillor Cox and on to Councillor Stapleton. Thank you for that, Roy. You kind of took some thunder there. <laughs> but I am, as always, concerned about surface water and, and its runoff. Uh, I attended site. I've also, I also said to officers that there's also, I have, uh, our concern about the, the retaining wall to the, towards the bungalows. And I was assured that the land level is being dropped by 800 millimetres and being landscaped in a way that it'll, it, it shouldn't give any extra pressure. But I can't see any, any drawings or any information regarding where the surface water is going to go apart from into soakaways. So, I would just assume he's just going to run into the ground. The, the surface water will be through soakaways um, and the foul drainage will be through mains drainage. Um, that was um, kind of negotiated with the um, agent through the process because obviously the, there was a wish for the infiltration system, um, but following consultation with the EA, and also flood risk um, that was removed from the scheme. Um, so that's the intention. And obviously there is there is the drainage condition, so we will approve those details. Uh, we, we see it on, on quite a few, don't we, where where obviously these, these conditions that this information comes after an approval or not. But it we don't have that, that reassurance that that information is given before, so we just don't know. And I know we can't do anything at this point in time, but it would be nice to have, have a lot of those things in place before it comes to this point, and then just to give us reassurance. But it, we also discussed overshadowing, and the overshadowing to the middle plot. That, that middle plot is in my opinion, extremely close to the, the Milner core ones, the, the Milner ones. Now, as you rightly said, that the sun's going to come this way, but we did see shadowing while we were stood there. So is there nothing can be done to either either move that property backwards, with, further within within that site, to, to obviously mitigate that shadowing at all? Because we did see it, but... You know, see, see if anybody else wants to. Wants to. <coughs> Just in very general terms, the application before you is the application you are determining today. Uh, the scheme has already been amended from five dwellings down to three. Looking at the site plan, if you're specifically discussing plot two, the centre plot, uh, the probably isn't much scope, maybe slight scope for bringing it a little bit further away, but it's not going to be uh, significantly further away. However, for your deliberations and your decision making today, based upon the site plan that's before you. Councillor Stapleton. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, 
one of the things I noticed on the site visit um, was the height of other properties on the, the far side of Milner Gate Court. So I just wondered, have we got any sort of idea of how tall they are in relation to the proposed development? Are they as, as tall as or higher or lower? Do you mean that the houses on the other side of Milner Gate Court? Yeah. That, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the two stories, I would probably say they're probably about seven and a half to eight metres high. That's a guess. Um, yeah, just they, they seem to be, when I looked at it, they seem to be built up on, on a slope, so they're much higher. It was like the, the, their, their base seemed to be in line with the line of the bungalows. So I was just wondering whether how far they up if they're overlooking already. So I, I get, I get it's outside the red line boundaries. So it's not necessarily something that would have been looked at, but I just, it was just a, you can't tell really just by doing the site visit. But that's fine if you're not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, can we have some clarification around the access and egress to the site and the impact on the neighbouring property? Because obviously you said it's not able to manage uh, traffic both ways and that uh, one of the residents has a responsibility as well for the part of that site. Um, can we just ask some how, how that would be managed? Do, do you mean in terms of construction activities? Or That's correct, yes, during construction yeah. and afterwards. Oh, sorry, it, it is on. I'll try and speak louder onto it. Uh, altogether, during construction and after, because obviously if the, the resident neighbouring has a responsibility for the access and egress, but uh, in the interim, it's uh, how that's going to be managed because the idea of somebody having to reverse back onto a construction site or onto a main road is a concern if it's only got enough uh, room for one-way traffic. So how is that going to be managed? Um. I mean, we, we, we could add a condition about a construction management plan, um, which is something that we often do. Um, that, 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 that could be a solution um, to any potential issues. We, we probably wouldn't normally do that on the kind of smaller scale developments. It's normally when you're dealing with the major applications. However, it is something that members in this specific instance may want to give consideration to as Nicola has, has mentioned. Thank you for that light. I've got Councillor um, well, Councillor Beach and then I'm going to have uh, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. Um, it's actually following on from what's just been said. I'm looking at page 27, uh, numbers 11, 12 and 13, which uh, one of the speakers broke, brought up about um, the vehicles parked in that, and I noticed that it says that um, it will be surfaced and, and all the rest of it for the uh, construction vehicles. Um, you know, uh, what I'm saying is, can we really make sure? Because it very often doesn't happen uh, that uh, there's, there's lorries all over the place and, and mud all over the place. So we need really to be able, should this be approved, we really need to make sure that those are adhered to and that they, they you know, get their parking sorted first. Thank you. Yeah, in, in relation to those conditions, Councillor, they're conditions that are actually after the development's been completed to ensure that the parking that's shown on the plan is provided, it's been surfaced, and it has got the drainage mechanisms in there. Uh, how that is normally dealt with is that uh, we would want to see evidence of that. We normally sometimes ask for photographs to be sent in that those works have been completed. However, it could also entail a visit to the site also just to check that everything's done to ensure that they're in compliance with those conditions. It's most important that any construction vehicles are not. Um, so yes, we need a, a, a plan for for when it's, you know, when it's being built. <laughs> Councillor Bob Anderson. Yeah, I was basically going to ask the question that Councillor Duran answered, but looking at the access on the site visit, it's something that's, it's, it's not great access, it's going to have to be managed. The, the, the recommendation that's before members is, is uh, one of uh, granting planning permission subject to these conditions. Uh, I'm sure there's still more questions to come forward and more debate to be entered into. It is therefore important that if you feel 
that additional conditions need to be added to this recommendation that they are proposed and seconded and voted on before then an actual vote takes place on whether planning permission should be granted or not. So I will just ask members to bear any conditions that you think you may need in mind and make sure you raise those before a decision is taken. Thank you for that, Roy. Uh, do we have any other questions? Councillor Stapleton. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's fairly evident that since the objections and the, the call-in was requested that there's been quite a lot of work done to mitigate those objections. Um, I'm just curious to find out, has, has anything been fed back to the objectors of, of where their concerns have been read? And that's, I know that's a procedural thing, but it just seems that people are coming here today, I mean, we're talking um, about reed beds, which obviously that's been removed completely. Um, and I just wonder whether anything has been fed back to local residents about some of the the, the mitigations that, that we've, we've done already? Um, the amendments were consulted on quite a number of times. The final amendment wasn't, um, which was the removal of the reed bed system, only because of the need to get it to planning committee. Um, so it, it wasn't consulted on, but I think there's probably been three um, consultations with neighbours over the, over the amendments, and there, ha there have been about eight versions of the site plan, so um, it was just really a case of um, practicalities, really. Um, but um, in terms of the, the three dwellings, that was consulted on, so that was obviously a fundamental change which was consulted on. Um, yeah, thank you. A supplementary from a Chair. Um, it's not really a question, really, it's just a follow-on from what I said. Um, I'm led to believe that, that since the mitigations were put in, there has been one further um, objection. Is, is, has that final objection been mitigated already or is, is that an issue that's still standing? Um, the, the objection um, obviously still stands because it, it relates to the, the scale um, of the development, the, the heights of the properties. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I've got another question. Therefore, with you mentioning the height of the property, how many three-storey buildings are in the vicinity? Um, and would we, you know, under consideration that we've got two that are uh, average size, but we've got a third one that's a lot, a lot bigger, uh, would that be? Uh, would you class that as being um, not in keeping with the area? Um, the, I would say the character of the area is predominantly um, single storey and two storey. Um, the, the plot one is also nearest the commercial development, which is along the front of Doncaster Road. Um, and, and this is, I would say, two, two and a half storey. Um, but plot one is the largest plot, so it can accommodate um, a two and a half storey, three storey development. And the three storey is at the rear, so it faces onto the recreation ground. So it was considered that. Um, even though it is slightly different from um, the surrounding properties, that it could accommodate the, the, the three-storey height at the rear. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Okay, is there a proposal to grant... Yeah, just have a oh, sorry, Councillor Cox. It, it's back to overshadowing again, I'm sorry. But if... I know you've said and you're trying to demonstrate that it wouldn't happen. But if it was to happen, what what recourse would residents have if they find that their garden is, is got no sunlight in the morning, if it's, if it's dull? What, what would they be able to do? I mean, I, I, I don't think it, it, it will significantly happen because the... the any shading goes goes from um, kind of it would go from west to east. So really, the most shading would occur with the with with the properties themselves, the proposed properties themselves. So it would be plot two's um, front and rear garden that would be shaded. Uh, with there would be an element of shading at the rear, but most of the shading because of how the sun goes round. Um, it would be plot two that would have some shading of its garden, not the properties um, on Milner Gate Court. Um, 
to, to answer your, di your question directly, nothing. If planning permission is granted, they are uh, enabled to carry out the development in accordance with the approved plans. Uh, quite right, I think, members, to focus on plot two. That is the area, I think, where it is close. However, you've heard from Nicola uh, in her report that as uh, professional advice is that she doesn't think it will lead to uh, any significant concerns over overshadowing. Uh, those members who attended the site will have a much better understanding. Uh, I would just draw your attention to policy 44 of the local plan. And I do apologise, I've lent Nicola my laptop, so I'm having to read it off my phone, which is extremely small. But uh, policy 44, residential design, uh, details that developments must protect existing amenity and not significantly impact on the living conditions or privacy of neighbours or the host property, including their private gardens, be overbearing or result in an unacceptable loss of garden space. Uh, now it's up to members to decide uh, which way they want to interpret that policy, but the officer recommendation before you is that there isn't a significant impact. What does help this development is the offsetting of the plots, so it isn't a direct relationship from proposed plot to existing plot. Inevitably, there will be some loss of uh, uh, light and a bit of overshadowing uh, as the sun tracks in the morning through the east, but then you'll get the enjoyment through the rest of the day. Taking Councillor Stapleton's point as well, that there are some more existing uh, large the commercial buildings uh, on, on the top there as well. That is something you do need to factor in because that's probably uh, you know having uh, some impact. However, this development is bringing that development closer to the residents there. So it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a balance. Uh, but the recommendation from officers is that uh, it wouldn't lead to a significant impact. Thank you for the clarification, Roy. Okay, so is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? Okay. Um, I'm happy to move that uh, an alternative that uh, we grant planning permission as long as there are construction management also added to the conditions to make sure that uh, expectations and impact on residents nearby is met. Uh, do we have a seconder for that proposal? Uh, that's been seconded by Councillor Ayers Beach. Uh, anybody in favour for that proposal? Can you show your hands please so we can see? Those against? One. Abstentions, please. Two, thank you. I'm now going to move to the uh, first proposal, that's correct. Okay, so is there a pro proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? No, everybody's against that one, yeah? Therefore, the, the uh, amended proposal is accepted, yeah. Thank you for that. We've agreed to add the construction so management. Six, seven, That's correct. Yeah. If, if they don't agree. Okay. Okay, I'll go back to the one. Is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? No, with the amendment. With the amendment of the construction yes. management committee yes. in place. Yes. Right. So I move that. Councillor Beach seconded it. Are you still happy to second it again? Yes. And can we have a show of hands again, please? Yes. Against? Yes. And abstentions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, item six is the adoption of the supplementary planning documentation on biodiversity net gain. Um, Ellen Markman, Principal Ecologist, will introduce this item. So, 
Thank you, uh, Chair. I'm delighted to present to Planning Committee this afternoon a report notifying members that the Council has adopted a biodiversity net gain supplementary planning document, which is now a material consideration for the determination of planning applications. The Doncaster Local Plan already includes a policy that requires development to deliver a minimum 10% net gain in biodiversity. The SBD is the first to be adopted in line with the new local plan and provides additional detail on how development should demonstrate it is delivering net gain. A draft SPD was published for full public consultation in spring 22, with feedback from that consultation taken on board as part of preparing the final adoption version. A summary of the consultation is included in the adoption report before you this afternoon, with more detail provided in the supporting consultation summary document. The SPD will help to ensure that development in Doncaster will deliver net gains in biodiversity and leave the natural environment in a measurably better state than it was before development occurred. The SPD focuses on having a local first approach to net gain delivery. It requires developers firstly to demonstrate how they have followed the mitigation hierarchy and avoided and minimised causing impacts um, to biodiversity. It then requires them to maximise opportunities for compensation on site before showing how opportunities for securing local off-site compensation projects have been explored. Finally, and only once it has been demonstrated that a compensation project cannot be found, the SPD includes the option that developers will, under some circumstances, be able to pay the Council a biodiversity offsetting contribution fee of £25,000 per biodiversity unit. These payments will be used by the Council to secure habitat creation projects and ensure development will deliver a net gain in biodiversity. Finally, it should be noted that the fee will be in place until the Environment Act is mandated, which is expected to be in winter next year. At this point, the need for development to demonstrate a minimum 10% net gain um, in biodiversity will become law, and the option to pay the fee would be replaced by the option to buy similar statutory biodiversity credits from the central government. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Helen. Does any member wish to speak on this matter? No? Uh, do members note the report and that newly adopted biodiversity net gain supplementary planning document is a material consideration when determining planning applications? Is that noted? Yes, noted? Thank you. Thank you. Item 7 is the revision to the Conisborough Conservation Area Boundary. Uh, Peter Lamb, the Principal Planning Officer, will introduce this item, so over to Peter. Thank you, Chair. Um, basically, there is a duty for the Council to review conservation areas when and, and as necessary. Um, Conisborough Conservation Area was designated in 1974, so there's been a, quite a lot of change since then, shall we say. We did the first appraisal in 2010 and a review in 2015. As part of both of those, conservation area boundaries were suggested to be amended to take out areas that were no longer considered to be um, significant to the historic value of Conisborough, but there were also areas that were thought to be, should be included within that area. Seeing though the review was taken in 2015, we actually went out to a consultation just on the boundary changes in uh, late 2021. As a result of that consultation, we had three um, comments on it, all in support for the, the, uh, the boundary changes. And the, 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 within the report, there are eight areas that are either to be added into the conservation area or taken out. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through all of those, or uh, whether it's worthwhile going through the presentation. That, that should be fine because we've all had okay. the paper. <laughs> <laughs> So there may, may be more than seven or eight, it's just gen the general kind of amendments there. But it's basically to make it more, reflect better the conservation area and not to cons be consulted on areas that are not important to the conservation area and, and uh, reduce bureaucracy where it's not needed. Okay, thank you for that, Peter. Um, do any members wish to speak on this item? Councillor Beach. Yes, um, merely to say that... Um, Bearing in mind uh, Councillor Ball has uh, vacated the chamber that, and he is one of the, uh, the, uh, the councillors for this area, um, I presume that then that they, the other councillors have no objections to any part of this, that you've been through all the, all the necessary uh, minutiae of, of the various areas. Um, so therefore I would say that we should note it. Thank you. 
I was just going to say that Councillor Pearson was, is very much supportive of it and wishes that we got on with it a long time ago to actually change the boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Councillor Stapleton. Thank you, Chair. Um, I understand this is, this is um, the first of hopefully many uh, uh, boundary reviews um, and I just want to say it's about time. So thank you very much for all the work you've done. Thank you. I can say we have done previous appraisals and we have had boundary changes uh, recommended. This is the first time that we've actually come to committee to actually sort those out. Okay, thank you for that. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these actually take, across, uh, take place across the borough because I think it is really important that we keep these things updated, you know, so we don't miss anything um, and it helps with our areas. Uh, is there a proposal to approve the amendment to the boundary of the Conisborough Conservation Area as shown on the designation map appended to the report and agree that it will be the new conservation area designated for uh, Conisborough? Is that, is that seconded? And are we all in agreement? Agreed. Thank you. Item 8 is the appeal decision, which is for uh, report information only. Does any member wish to speak on that? <laughs> okay, uh, can we then just uh, re oh, sorry, note the report, thank you. Thank you yeah, so that is noted. Um, I'd therefore like to thank everybody for their attendance and input, and I now declare the meeting closed. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you.